be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my dad walk on. Man, hey, man. This is a day that the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. That's my new way of coming mm-hmm. in now. You got to get ready when it's coming. To, you know what I'm saying? When, you go, when you're coming in, I done did 700 and some episodes, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one thing we don't do enough is to telling people to like and subscribe to our channel. We do not do that enough, <laughs> even though people still be following us and stuff, man. But we got two very special guests in here today, man. Um, I don't want to mess your name up, Sharika. Yeah, Sharika. And my boy Daniel, man. And you really don't know who these people are. Uh, but if you've watched our show and you've been tuning in, and a lot of you guys have, um, these these two guys are special to us because of mm-hmm. their son, Wardy Two Live. You know what I mean? And these guys here, man. Like I said, I met the husband at the funeral. Not the husband. Well, the the, the father. The father. Yeah. She, 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 she said she's correct she's me. Not, not the husband. Not the husband. The but father. Her, her husband. No, no, she, she gonna, oh. we, we may pull her in if, if okay. it, it, it can happen. You never know. She's this like, let's be prepared. This, yeah, it could happen because I get to ask some questions and anything <laughs> can happen, you know, because I want to hear the stories that tie to him. Those are the things that the people want to hear anyway, you know, because we only knew Wardy from what he told us on the show. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And this was the last show that he done. You know what I mean? So, two uh that whole yeah, tell mm-hmm. me comment. They, that whole, the whole clique of people that come over here, even since uh, what it passed on, um, they I've called them back because I be you know just seeing how they doing you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But it, he was the first one to come on my show. I had just started. That's why when you asked me, he was like, "How long you been doing it?" Think about that for a minute. When he first came, I didn't, I hadn't been doing it long. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I was just getting started, and of course it blew up. Everybody talking about it. It's known. Everybody flying in and the country wanes and all they people and the phase on love that it's cool now but when it wasn't cool is the people that i look at like what had a following right. you know what i mean and he had a, a, a people that followed his, his his movement and he had been into some stuff already with where the bloggers was posting him when he had gotten shot the first time mm-hmm. so i seen him and when my son told me i looked him up i said man he been on terry blue neil them show dallas globe i was like man i gotta i, I gotta get him on here and my son was like that's family, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I was like, man, you know, once we got him on here, it was just, uh, we had so much fun that day. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I know you always uh, have some things you want to know. So right. I, I got to get her perspective because I over talk her, y'all. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> 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 no, um, we like to take it back to, you want to know what it was like growing up in the area that you were raised in, your environment. Um, and then let's fast forward to Wody being born and how y'all met and stuff like that. Look <laughs> how you looking like, that. Ah, all of that. So go ahead, let's start with you, Sharika. Well, we both grew up in Grand Prairie. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I think we went to yeah, yeah, elementary school together. Oh, okay. Like, um, being my alum. Okay. Yeah. So as we got older, I think I met him again. Even though we lived in the same neighborhood, we didn't you know see each other and nothing like that i think i was like what 18 was 18 she probably was 20. <laughs> he, he always had to act like i'm real older than him <laughs> well she told you 20 but she was probably under age is that what you were trying to say no because I, really, I was under age I, oh oh okay <laughs> I believe you. Okay. I think we'll take advantage of you. But, okay. I'm here with you, brother. Let's go. He, I knew he was going to say that. He he always say that. <laughs> but that's not what happened. I thought he was older because mm-hmm. he always been around older and people. Okay. And then he had the dogs and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. So so we met. And then we had our older son, which is Daniel Paco. Mm-hmm. And then um, we had Wody. So when I was pregnant with Wody, he had to go do time in in prison. How long was so, you? How long were you gone for? But, but they years. they didn't want two him years? to leave to after Wody was born. born. Okay, that's yeah. good. So he was so, about two weeks when I knew. Yeah, that's good. Okay. At least you were there to yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah. That's but good. but Wody was very advanced. I'm talking about he was walking at five months. He threw his bottle away. He never took a pacifier. He started talking where you can understand his words when he was like eleven months. Wow. Like he was very fat. He taught the other Paco Paco was always real slow behind Wody even though he was older. He like he taught Paco how to walk. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> like he potty trained Haka. No. And even like what he potty trained himself when he was like eight months old. And he was always taller, so everybody thought he was older than mm-hmm. what he was. But he just always been very advanced. Like I put a baby bed up for him, he used to jump out. And Paco would be standing up there because they had it together, waiting to get out. And what he like, man, come on. It's so funny how you can have multiple kids and they're never like the same. They're always like total yeah, opposites. Totally, totally opposite. But what he was the one very intelligent when it comes to education. He's always very smart. But he had the smartness with everything. Like he he knew the street life, the books. He knew the hustle. Did he just pick he, it up, or somebody taught him? He just he just picked it up. But I, I I'm I'm assuming because of the people we we around, like our family. Mm-hmm. So he was just he cussed. Oh, he cussed so big. So by the time who did he get that from? I just from being a you know. Just, <laughs> Look how he like, look at look at <laughs> <how> he, <laughs> but, <laughs> he just cussed like really. But people grown would come pick him up. They want to ride with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They want to. You know, hit blocks with him, and he like one years old, and he in the front seat holding the money. He just he always just been been in the in the, yeah, in, in the and limelight. Like, people just even his friends when he was gone, they would come get them. Paco be in the back seat sucking a pacifier, and Wody <laughs> in the front seat with the money. And <laughs> <laughs> so that's <laughs> because growing up, Paco everybody baby Paco because he yeah. was, you know that's the why first. his name is Paco because he's like a little Spanish baby. Okay. So all her friends, they always came and picked him up. You know what I'm saying? They always carried and him. held him. So that's was why home. he was like that. And Wody, he was like out the gate, he was gone. He was he was doing him. Yeah. So you know that's why he he advanced like he did. And then he was Parker was way more. Parker always been the type of child where he was a, a crowd pleaser. Like he want yeah. he want everybody to get along, and he want to shine for everybody. He don't want to you know mess up his image. Wody never gave a damn. Ever, ever, ever. Like you couldn't beat it out of him. What? Um, I want to go back on your just how mm-hmm. you, cause, cause she told her side. And I get it, <laughs> but I want to hear your side, cause it's probably more exciting. You know no, I doubt. I'm riding with the man so, side. No. So you know, I'm already, I'm building this bridge, <laughs> this this wall up. Right. Yeah. But just tell us a little bit about you and just coming up, you know, in Dalworth and just how it was. Show because up. I heard a lot about it, actually. When I was going through my thing, mm-hmm. I would hear about Dalworth. Dalworth, you would hear a lot about that that part of uh, Grand Prairie. Yeah, so, you know, I'm an early 80s baby, you know, so I grew up in Dalworth, mm-hmm. but uh, my mama, she actually tried to keep me out of Dalworth. Okay. She moved. It was never really too far, you know what I'm saying? But we, we was far enough to where we could walk, but it was far enough to where you, you didn't need to be there. But I always ventured back, you um, know, as I got older, got in my, you know how to get to the point where they, you smelling yourself. Mm-hmm. I want to go back to the hood. I want to go stay my green. And it got to the point where, you know, she couldn't do nothing with me. So that's why I went back to the hood. And then from there, you know, I kind of got in the streets, started doing my thing, started doing, you know. And I was probably about, honestly, I was like 16 when I met her. Okay. I seen her walking. I knew who she was because we went to school together. I said what I said to her. We started talking, whatever, whatever. Everything transpired. We ended up with the kids. Wow. At 18... I get locked up. I go to penitentiary for two years. So you had Paco and, and Wody. Wody by the time you was 18? No, nah, I had hey, Paco, Tori, okay. my oldest daughter. Okay. Shout out to her, Danny Dollars. She, okay. She cooks. She's a major chef. She's a major chef. I might need to get her on the show. She okay. cooks, and we can bring them burners in here. I'm getting hungry now. Let's get out of there. <laughs> she's, a, she's a natural. She go in. So it was Paco. What did she cook at? Let me she, ask that. She, right now, she had, she were at, at her house. You okay, know, but she, she, she caters. She caters, caters out. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, the I'm best way to do it, yeah. no overhead. Yeah, exactly. Okay. She's pretty dope. smart with it. She's yeah. smart with it. So it was Parko, then Tori, then Wody. Wody. So when I left at 18, I was going to Sam Houston High School at the time. And uh, yeah, I went to Penn Trench for two years to come home. But by that time, <laughs> her family had already put the influence on Wody. You know what I mean? Like, was, she come from the type. Two. He was too. She come from the type of family in the hood. Like that's she got the type of family that you just you don't want to get tired of with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be on the good side and you damn sure don't want to be on the bad side. <laughs> wow. You know? So it's like that. So, so it's her. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. So you you feel I, me. I really you feel, feel you. Me. Like I get it. So it it was like that. And so when I come home, you know, I mean, I, I my I was braised, braised up pretty decently. My granny, she was a big influence on my life, you know, yeah. my work, everything, you know. My mom and my daddy, you know, they was there, but my granny, she was a she huge. She kept that money on your books. Yeah. Who? Your, your granny? granny. No. no. She didn't keep no money on your books. Did no. she write you the letters? 
Now wow. she she did the choice where it's either help you or help your kids. Yeah, oh, okay. and that's how my mama that's was. That's how okay. my mama was. So like my my when I did that two years, I, I seen my mama like twice. Yeah, and because she financially she couldn't do it, and then again she was helping me. I got three kids on the streets, so she helping you know them with the kids. What year was that? That was uh, from ninety nine to two thousand. What 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 you what, what you what you went state. No, two thousand to two thousand. Well, well, I'll tell you, yeah. yeah, I left in January two thousand one because I had already had three months uh, of okay. back time. So. Yeah, 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 they so, ran that yeah. with it. And and where did you go first? For the penitentiary. Yeah. Okay, the first I went to. Uh, no, no, no. No, no Middleton to go read. No, transfer I went to, I went to, No, I went to Middleton. Okay. I left Middleton. I went to Plainview. I got bench warranted because I was on paper. Yeah. In Dallas already, when I got my time out of Tarrant County. So when I came back. I went through Hutchins. Then I left Hutchins. I went to yeah. They be doing that. Too. I think I went to what's it, Darrington? No, what was the other? What was the other uh, transfer facility? Uh, you got. I know it was Middleton and Gurney. Gurney. Yeah. So I went through Gurney. So I get to Gurney, and uh, I get in a scuffle. You know yeah, what I mean? Of my mouth is fly. Yeah. I get into it with the dude. You know what I mean? I end up whooping the dude. So you so, went to Gurney and Six Four was down there. That's my home girl. She worked down there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's, let's get to it, nigga. Yes. Yeah, real yes. street yes. talk yes. around it. <laughs> Stallion, you hear me? I'm talking about. Yeah, oh, yeah. Boy. yeah you, she yeah, was you, married to uh, Rambo. Oh, that, okay. Yeah, I, heard, I, I heard stories yeah, about yeah, that. Six Four was. Yeah, she was yeah, doing her thing down there. But sure. that's a, that was good eye candy when you locked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at him. He, he remember. Hey, boy, I tell my say, you shot me back. Right there. <laughs> yeah, he he remember. Me back. I be tripping. That's why yeah. it's so crazy, man. Yeah. I might say it. <laughs> yeah. But I definitely, uh, I, re, I yeah, Six Four, she, she was one of those. One. Matter of yeah. fact, she's uh, Nene's. Uh, uh, Aunt, the Trey's mama. Uh huh. That's her, one of her best friends. Okay. So she she lived in March, but she would work in, down there at Gurney. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's so that's how. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a you small know, world. My, my daughter actually a prison guard right now. Oh really? Mm -hmm. yeah, at a woman's yeah. prison. At a woman's prison down oh, yeah. in Austin. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. So yeah, yeah. That that that's something that I tell her to treat those people right. I say you got some bad ones, but there's some good people in there too. Yeah. I say you know you just never know, man, who you're gonna be dealing with or. You know, or what they might have been even in there for if they of color. To be honest, with you. a lot of them be wrongfully accused. I've had some lawyers and stuff on here now that really show mm -hmm. you that there's a lot of people that don't do certain things and get caught up, right. and they forced it on them. Especially in those times where you talking about right yeah, there, yeah. them times right there, we hot. I could just say it like this: How'd you feel when you were in that courtroom? You don't look like it was supposed to be there for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, nah, like you belong. Honestly, they, I mean, at 18, they didn't give me no choice. My first, my only option was penitentiary. They didn't try to give me no probation. See? Now, if you'd have been another, a look of another race, yeah. uh, I guarantee you, you wouldn't even, probably even went to jail. Yeah. It, it, and and I, talk, I got friends that talk about this yeah. that are, are of the other race, to be honest with you. Like, I didn't, they'd have never took us for that. You remember that lady mm -hmm. I was, I got stopped seven times with DWI. Nobody never took me to jail for that. I'm like, damn. Yeah, yeah, it's real. It's a different. It's, it's definitely a privilege thing, yeah. you know. So you get down there, you do your time, you come back home. What is two, one? Two. He's two. 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 Yeah, yeah. He right at he right at two. So mm -hmm. he when I I remember like yesterday, I come home, I come to her granny house. They all outside, you know. They got a huge family. Yeah, it's a lot of cousins, and they all around the same age. It's a lot of them. So he out there. He had Nikki all that old stuff, her alone. Yeah, cutting you know up. Saying? He always liked that with her, like her alone, whatever, doing him. And I'm just shaking my head, you know, because you got him doing him, but you got Paco. You know, Paco, he, he you know, he been the baby. You know, my dad, daddy's baby. You know, yeah. everybody's baby, really. But anyway, what he was doing him, and I seen then, like, I got to get him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I've been taught better. Because Paco ran up and hugged him, Dad. And what he like? What's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Wow, a regular hey, two year old would have ran live, to you. He been live. He been live. So, um, you know, I'm broke. So I mean, you know, I'm I'm, I'm in the hood. It's, yeah, this what it is. So I'm finna, you know, I get back active. You know, me and one of my little partners, we pull something. He bless my game. I take off. So I started doing me. You know, of course, I got the kids. I'm I'm trying to raise the kids, being a father to my kids. But you know. I had him with me a lot, you know, and um, but I'm doing my thing at the same time, and I'm feeling like I'm doing what I'm supposed to as a father, not realizing 
They watch. They watching more than I realize. You know what I mean? Because you're mm-hmm. that young, you don't you don't really you don't believe think, that they, they watching like watching. that, right? You think they're too young to know? Exactly. Like they don't understand, but mm-hmm. they really do the whole time. So I'm doing what I got to do, and uh, we hit that button. Mm-hmm. The record hey, button. Okay. We, you know, we was doing pretty decent. You know what I mean? I had a young lady that I started dealing with on a regular basis that I was with. You know, she was pretty good to them. They was coming up and all, and uh, all of them. Two, yeah, it was a lot of. So, in two thousand and four, I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. real good. You know what I mean? I got, you know, I got eighteen wheeler box truck. I'm doing my thing on the box truck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Easy way. Yeah, cleaning money. Everything was good. And uh, one time, one of my partners was having a party in the cliff. I had just knocked me off of SS, paid, got it out. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. that was a thing back then. You know, yeah. you grab your SS, you, you know, on, man. they know you done made it. You know yeah, what I mean? So yeah. I grabbed you one. What I, color was it? It was black. So like off, the, right off the showroom floor. That's you know just I mean? like, uh, that's the black, like uh, Robert. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I just tell her who got the car. Like we still got these cars popping around like that. Yeah, I got one now. Yeah, you got one <laughs> yeah, now too. Got one now. See, yeah. Yeah. I got so. seventy two Chevelle that says this. Go and put that out there, right there, right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a couple of them, but anyway. Yeah, me too. But I, I, we well, I had it. I didn't even ever drive that Cadillac. I lost it. Damn. Yeah. But so go ahead, keep going. I grabbed that. <laughs> I'm going to my part in the party in the cliff, and um, at the time I was on the box truck, I had made a run, come back. The lady I was with at the time told me, don't leave. She gonna come to the house. She was doing some hair. I'm gonna come to the house. So I'm like, I don't be here. I paid my mama to come sit with the kids at the house so I can go to the party. Somebody called me from the hood. I go drop some off in the hood. I still got like two zips with me. I'm coming down the freeway. I'm blowing, coming down to 360. And uh, on Arkansas, 360 yeah. is a walkway. Yeah, come on now. You know what I mean? So. I see the person up there, I'm thinking there's somebody walking. The whole time it's a law, he clocking. So, you know, when you're going up like this here on, on 360, you can't see on the other side. No. At speed trap, it was like two law cars and my four motorcycle cars. I'm blowing this glass house, you know, so I'm sliding in. When I see the lights, I get over, you know what I mean? I'm trying to think how I'm gonna do it, but I get over because I know I'm driving lights insurance, did not to mention, just the first car I had in my name. Ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I feel like because I got my businesses out and made it, I you know can made, do You could do it, yeah. I'm still sleeping, you know. So long story short, dude pulled me over. I know they in the in the, in the uh, center console. He gave me out the car or whatever, whatever. At the time, just when everybody was wearing the NASCAR jacket, even them jackets had the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the beanies with the bib, you know. So I got it tucked over my eyes because I'm trying to play the camera. I ain't never turning my face to the camera, you know what I mean? So dude get ready to go in the car because you smell the weed. I done put the, the blunt inside the air freshener. Yeah. And I done put the tie back on, put in the dough. As soon as he get ready to grab, you know, go in and get the answers, I grab him. I throw him out the way. Yeah, I jump in the car. You know, it's the 96, so I'm in the flow. I snatch him in the flow, and I see him fall with his gun. Yeah. And when he fall, I know he finna start shooting, you know what I mean? One, I'd already assaulted you, you know, I threw you to the ground, and then you grab your gun, so. I exit off Mayfield, high speed chase. I stayed in, in Grand Prairie off Mayfield. Yeah. I get away from them, helicopters, everything, beat the dogs, everything. But I told them my car in the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the grace of God, I jumped out the car, car spinning and everything. But what happened, the car, when I, I hit this church sign, when I tried to turn in the neighborhood, the car spin on side of the church. So when it go on side of the church, it's in the black side where the light ain't at, so they can't see it. The light's knocked out, the laws keep going. So I, I jump out the car, Take my chain coat out, I'm running. Get to the house. My mama at the house. I tell her, hey, mom, you, I pay my mama, you can go and go. You know, I'm breathing hard. She, what you breathing hard for? I just ran from, you know, whatever. It's all right, mama. So my lady pull up. She like, shit, what a black car. I say, look, man, these people around the corner right here. Go her around the corner, you know, and, and see what's going on. See, she, cause she asked, she's like, you seen all them lives and helicopters? And I said, yeah, go over there and check it out. So she go over there. <laughs> When she go over there, she come back, she in tears. What did you do? What did you do? And I'm like, man, it was one of them situations. I told you to stay there, I told you. Cause she was older than me. She was quite yeah. a bit older than me. So I messed up or whatever. I was, uh, what did they charge you for all of, doing all of that? What did they try to charge? They, 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 they gonna take the highest thing they can find. Mm-hmm. What they did, they charged me for- uh, assault. assault. Definitely assault. The, assault. Assault on the peace officer, uh, felony evading in a motor vehicle, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, of course, I got rid of the issue. Yeah, of course. And um, 
that gave me, man, I had probably about $1,300 worth of tickets. Because Arlington and Grand Prairie gave me the same tickets. Because I because ran from Arlington to Grand Prairie. Right. Over they the, gave me the right. same tickets. Mm -hmm. So I get away everything, right? I'm still driving the box truck, whatever. I had just, I had got my mama a new car, right? The tag, paper tag was out one day. I went to the store in the hood on my lunch break. Really was dropping something off in the hood, go back, you know, in my mama car on a lunch break, going to the store, getting some drinks, so I can go back to my truck. A law jammed me, but what it was a new law in the hood. So everybody know all the laws, all the laws know who doing what. Yeah. But they gotta catch you, you know? So I was in my short bid a couple weeks before this new law seen me. And like at the time, in Delaware, it was zero tolerance, like no stopping, no standing. So yeah. you stopping, they stuck, catch you stop somewhere, they standing, they gonna jam you. Yeah. I'm in the middle of the road, again, cause somebody hollered at me about something. So when I see the law, I burn out, I'm not knowing one of my tail lights was out. Yeah. I pull up in uh, one of my old school partners yard when he hit the lights on me, that's when he tell me, give me the ticket and everything. But again, I don't remember this law, he, he knew. So I'm thinking that just that shift he was working at one time. Just so happened, that's the same law that stopped me. I know I got these warrants out, but I, I, know the, I know the laws and I know what time they work. So I know what time to go and what not to. So this one particular, this just so happened, how, you know, this is how God worked. So he come back, I give my brother name. Yeah, yeah, I did that before. He come back, he like, hey man, I ain't gonna charge you with felony to ID, you know what I mean? But I know who you are. You got a felony warrant, I saw him piece of so I played a role like I don't know, whatever, whatever. I go to jail. He, but the thing is, he allowed one of my partners to take my mama car, yeah. so which was cool. She, he take it back, or whatever. So I end up bonding out or whatever. And she, you know, she went down here from there. But did you? Yeah, did you have, how long did you have to do that next bid? I ended. I got blessed, man. I got. I had to do two the first time. This time I got a three. But uh, I had Bill Cox and I had another uh, Derek Brown out of uh, Tarrant County. What I did, I brought them together because I had a young lady in Houston the whole time that I was rocking with, she, you know, she said she was gonna testify, say I was down there because the load I had, I went to Shootsburg. Shootsburg is right in between San Antonio and Houston. Yeah. So I said, I was in Houston. I left Shootsburg with the Houston. She was gonna testify and everything, but they told me, hey, just on reasonable doubt, they can take you to trial. Yeah. Do you do, do the fact of your history and everything. And he was like, you know, it's a good chance. Mm -hmm. Because I was, you know, in my, my paperwork, I was a jackrabbit. They know they stopped me. I'm running, you know. If, if you see, yeah. you get me out of the car, I'm running, or yeah. whatever. You yeah. Know? And how how long uh, you 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 did the three? Did you do the whole nah, three? No, nah, I did 19 months on the three. 19 months and, on uh, three, and the rest on on parole. Right, I parole. That's when I parole to San Antonio. I moved to San Antonio 2007. I've been there ever since. Wow, man. So when you and and this, the, the, you know, when he gone during this time, you you raising them boys on your own or trying to. The first time, the second time, I was gone. Before he was gone, so you was locked up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it was a point in time my mama had. Then we both was in the penitentiary at the yeah. same time. Same time. So yeah, he come from it. He seen it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How old was he it. when you when you when left? I, when I left, he was four. Four. He was four. Okay. And yeah. how long were you gone for? Two years. Two years. Mm. So yeah. this is something that that this definitely trickles down. It definitely. But he but he left like I was already there for a year and a half. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So when when he left, then I came home. Okay. Did y'all both come home around the same time? I or? came home like six months before, before he did. did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was what was it like when you it came was, home for warding them and they seen you and it, it really wasn't bad because how old were they when you came home? Six, they was six, four and five. Okay, oh, four, yeah, and five. four and five. But his um his ex wife, her mama, they always brought the kids to see me. Like they would come from San Antonio to where was I at in Gainesville, mm -hmm. so they would. But I never had met her before, so she just reached out one day and wrote me a letter. But this is my first time going to jail for anything, so I'm already messed up because I'm don't want to be here. So she just show up one day with them, with the kids, and so she started coming every. How did that, How did it make you feel to see them for the first time while you was locked up? You was happy. Yeah, I was real happy. Like, me and Wody, we always, like, Paco, he always cry. Like, but Wody, he always, like, Mom, keep your head up. Like, <laughs> this guy here. <laughs> I just think he's, he's so young and he's still talking like, like that. Don't cry in front of nobody. Don't, you know, show no emotions. Just, Paco, like, you like, he knows. <laughs> yeah. That's so yeah. crazy. 
That that's, is really that is crazy. crazy. And so, but then you know, one thing I've always heard because I hear a lot of people tell us, "Well, um, my parents was locked up. My parents was locked up," and I've never really had the opportunity to, to hear from a parent who was locked up. How did it feel being locked up away from your kids, <laughs> away from terrible. your family? You know, it, it, the the reason it was so terrible for me because I honestly did not do it. That's the most terrible. There we go. Like here we go. <laughs> this is the thing. Yeah, that is something. right there. I knew that me, was coming. Me and Mr. Walter always being friends. Like we've been over. Like we always just been friends. Right. But he had the type of women that always thought it was something, mm -hmm. and it really wasn't nothing. Mm -hmm. So I get caught up in okay. his woman thinking that it's something, but right. it's not. Mm -hmm. So she sent her friend to come fight me. When I'm letting her get the kids every weekend, like they always got them. But Wody the type, you do, you punish him. Mama beat her ass, she put, she hooked me. So I used to listen to that. Oh, I'm finna hook this bitch. She yeah. don't put her hands on my hands. <laughs> he be ready to get to it. Yeah, she, yeah. So yeah, he knew yeah. exactly how to play yeah, you. Yeah, like anytime Mr. Watson do something, Wody don't want to go back. Mm -hmm. So he be like, Mama, she hit me. So then I call her, cause we cool. I'm cool with all his women. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what happened? You know, she like, oh, you, you ain't, it ain't about the kids. It's about him. So she like, come meet me and fight. So I go meet her and fight her. She put me in jail. Then I tell and she her, the one who say, come fight. Yeah. Then she called. She had the police already on the call. She trying to set you up. Yeah. So when I go to jail, I tell him, you better get me out. <laughs> <laughs> like this is your fault. <laughs> and and, and y'all so, was young too. We young, so she dropped the charges. But then she sent her home girl who deal with mental disabilities to come fight. So when I fight her, then they like, oh, you yeah. assaulted a, a, a disability mm -hmm. patient. MHMR patient. Wow. Yeah. So right. when I go to jail. That's crazy. Yeah, so I'm not thinking they're gonna send me to prison. prison. Mm -hmm. So I take a polygraph test. You I pass. pass it. But then you got a witness that say, no, she did this. And then the witness was my cousin. Damn, and they go with the your, girl by your cousin. <laughs> wow! And then I never I noticed. I fight my cousin right. after that. I never noticed till I'm in jail and I get a letter from him. He in jail. Oh, I'm sorry. He love make you do crazy things. I wish I wouldn't. Oh, never so you done didn't it. know he did. I had no idea till that day. So when they they trying to give me ten years, I'm about to cut my throat. I don't can't even do this time. I'm right not here. Be able to do this. I'm about to die in here. <laughs> So I'm, no I'm so suicidal through the whole process. The officer and you wasn't thinking about your kids at all. I, no, because yeah. I'm go ready ahead. to go. Because they got their daddy and, uh, and nine stepmamas. So I'm ready to me. I'm ready to go. So then they come back and like, well, we could give you two years. And so Mr. Walter, like, take the two years. I got the kids. <laughs> take take the, two. the two years. He just ready, but because he done he been to prison be before, right. so he know. And I'm like, but what if they come back with more? And like, no, I'll just take the two years and go. Uh, he know but that's, that's the best you're going to get. The county time process was really fast because he always made somebody brought the kids up there. That had the time to, to go by. Because me and my kids always had, like, a real... Close relationship. Close relationship. Like, if I'm sleeping in the car, they sleep in the car. If we homeless, they homeless. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, y'all finna go to San Antonio. No, we'll sleep outside with you. Because <laughs> when I came home, everything was good and everything just dropped. Just dropped because before I went, I never was a, in the streets, in the club, nothing. But when I came home, everything was different. So now I'm outside in the club, in the street. So I, I spent a lot of money on. Why do you think that um, being in jail changed you like that? Really, going to jail, it really helped me because before I went to jail, I didn't know nothing. Like, I ain't know how to do nothing. Like, mm -hmm. I learned everything while I was in there. Like, when I came out, I knew everything I didn't know. Like, I ain't know how to do nothing but really change diapers and take her kids. That's it. But it give you time to think, right? Yeah. It give you so time to grow up. I learned, who, I learned who God was. I yeah. read the Bible for the my first time reading the Bible was when you I was in jail. Even though I went to church every Sunday. From a kid, but so I never had read the It's Bible. a big difference, That's ain't it? So yeah, it's a real big difference. Real big difference. And the crazy thing is I used to pray, and but I never read the Bible. And so when I went to jail. Because you were doing what you were taught. Right. I met a mentor. Right. Who wasn't in jail. She just come to the jail and talk to people. Mm -hmm. So I just bonded with her. Then I became a, 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 a priest. 
<laughs> oh, you was jail. a priest in the jail. So I started praying for people. <laughs> they going to court. They getting out. I'm mad because I ain't I'm, I ain't getting out. So now I don't want to pray for them no more. <laughs> like, I'm telling God, I ain't praying for them no more. I ain't praying for nobody. You told me you were taking me home. I ain't went home. So one day, I'm in. they always put me in a single cell because of the assault. So one day, I'm mad at God. We battling back and forth. So I said, you tell me I'm going home. I ain't go home. I'm not praying for nobody. I don't want to have no relationship with you no more. It's over. So they, I'm wrecked in the cell. She breaking up with God. Yeah, so then I wow. hear, then, then this is the first time I ever hear, I ever hear God's voice. And he's saying, he say, I, I never told you that. So from, from that point on, I go to court and I take the two years. He like, take the two years, just take it. So I take the two years. Because in this time, they never give me no bun. But the officers, they all love me. Like, shout out to Miss O at Tarrant County. The, all the officers, Miss Birdo, they all just taking care of me because they see that I'm, I'm everywhere in this situation. So I go to court and go to prison. So when I go to prison... It's it's a whole different world. Wow! In in that prison. In that prison. Yeah, it's it's different. So, but when I get out, me and, and the kids, I didn't see them for like a month when I first came home. Then when I see them, we just file back in place. They like buying them shoes and clothes. But his ex wife, her mama, they 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 diff they have a different type of living than than what we doing. So they like we'll keep them until you get situated. So that's what we doing. Then Wody come. No, she hit me. And put me. <laughs> she did this so, and that. So. Wody was turned up from the time when you <laughs> first went to the time when she mm. come back. So, you were turned up the whole time. So listen, I'm going to bring my kids down here. They ain't come back down on no more. So they like, okay, cool. So they bring the kids. So then Mr. Watts to get out. So it's the same thing. They go, well, the mama come get me. She hit me. I say, put your horn up on. I'm going to whoop this <laughs> on my way down. <laughs> so when did you realize that? Then I realized yeah. one day, this no lie, one day I'm on the phone arguing with him and her because what are you telling me? And I'm going out. And something, it is, ain't probably nothing but God, like, look, what are you over there? He's smiling from Smile. ear to ear. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, he knows she's going home. He, he knows. Know he ain't got to go He back. over there smiling from ear to ear. Like, yeah, he tapping his hand. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> he cheering you on. And he how like, old, how old he, five. he five. He five. He five. He six. No, he six at this time. He six. Mm. He couldn't. Oh. So he over there in the corner, and I just look, and he telling Paco, yeah, we we ain't got to go back. Yeah, so. You didn't turn around and whoop him after that? <laughs> nah, I just told him. At, at that moment, I promise, I, I was like, listen, I apologize, y'all. You know, it's good with her if hunger. So I was like, oh, then he like, man, I'm, <laughs> he cussing bad. He like, pop's good, but I hate the nut. You don't want to deal with nobody you dealing with on them women. <laughs> nah, it no. was just my ex-wife. He just, oh, it was just yeah. yours? Yeah, but see, let me show you something, too. Uh, when Wody then was down at school, man, I'm gonna tell you just a story. It, it, the boy was that bad though. To where they at the school, you know, it's a lot. Of, you know, it's a lot of space. How old was there. he at that time? He had to be. Well, this before he right before you got yeah. him. So he was so probably about, like about six, six, five, six yeah, still? Right, okay. about five, maybe five, maybe five. Because okay. once I came home, my ex wife she was in an apartment, so I had old school whatever. I sell it, do it, give me a bucket, I get the money, get us a house. So we moved to the east side of San Antonio. You know, it's it's rough. You know what I mean? It's rough. So. They going to the school up the street, but it's a lot of Hispanics, though. So they coming home. You know, every other day, they done had words. The teacher done said some. You know what I'm saying? So here, here Walt and Paco, yeah, them kids, they, they they bad, they racist, or they in gangs. And I'm like, you ain't elementary. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's what they giving me, though, you know? But, you know, a couple of times they had words. It's a couple of times. You know, Walt, he was he was quick to fight. He was yeah. quick to fight. So. You know, he was he was getting his little scuffle. Some he got in trouble for some he didn't, you know, because they the new kids, so they understood someone was being picked on. And then two, when you come from up here, this from the metro place, this environment down there, you're not finna come down there. Cause you know, it's slower at that time. Yeah. It was a lot yeah. slower. So you gonna feel, even as a kid, you know like y'all yeah, yeah, ain't on the same level. So y'all not finna bogo go or nothing like this. Yeah, he yeah. always been like that. So of course he got in a lot of trouble. So one day, he at at this time he get into it with his teacher. I don't know what he was having going on. I'm working at this warehouse at the time. This is the first time I didn't have a job, you yeah. know, so I'm trying to keep it. And it's clear 30 minutes on the other side of town. So he get into it with the teacher. They call me Franny. This dude done left the school. 
Yeah, uh-uh. took out running down the school, down the street. They can't nobody catch him. Teachers, general, everybody running out there. You got him. He go all the way down the street, but at the end of the street, it's a the main road go this way, and you keep street. I mean, keep on the side of the street where the housing school is. It's a cemetery at the end. The boy runs straight into the, the cemetery. cemetery, but once he realized where he at, he turn around, he go to screaming. Now, cause he don't, he he, he, he thinking dead body, dead. Uh-huh. He don't want nobody to touch him. I, I had to come from work and everything, man. Like, yeah. hey. <laughs> But you know that's when your mama say yo you you you, you so damn bad you scary though you know what I'm saying yeah, you should yeah. be so damn bad yeah and that's that was the cow he was <laughs> but I tell you man I, and, and those stories let's let's fast forward up to his teenage years like but before you say that I want to know so during all this time did you ever knew that he might be in music he never he never he he never said nothing about music till he was like. 13. Okay, because you know some people start yeah. when they were young. So I was just Ooh. trying to figure out what when did he say did he about start? music when he was 13. Okay, so the school called, and they like, um, you got to come get him. He um, soliciting at the school. I'm like, what he doing? He got backpacks. You know, we get food stamps at this time. So we go to Sam's and get all the big bundles of everything. He got everything in his backpack. He's selling Trying everything to sell. for $5, chips for $5, candy awesome. boys for $5. They so they like, you got to come get him. He's mentally disturbed. <laughs> But he got money on his mind. That's all it was, though. <laughs> so, At a young age, you got to get him doing no so, trip. So I go get him, and he had a coach back then. Um, he was a Hispanic guy. And the coach, you could always call him. He'll come talk to him. So um, I'm like, what are you, um, they want you to train to school. I ain't do nothing wrong. So he, he always want to argue his situation. He ain't just going to take nothing. Nothing. So I, I'm, I said, what, what, what happened? So it's one little boy, like, he sold me a bag of chips for $5 that I bought at the store for 75 cents. <laughs> so Wody like, you took that deal. <laughs> I ain't tell you to take that deal. You took the deal. Right. And you read the pay, so I want my money. So Wody took the money. So then when I'm talking to him after they kick him out for two days, I don't want to go to school anyway. I want to be a rapper. Oh, that's what he said. And I'm like, you don't even know how to rap. You play basketball and football. I don't even want to do that. My knees hurt. Because he always been tall. Mm. So I didn't understand that he really had a problem with his knees, knees. until he was like 17 years old. They call but, that growing pains. That's mm-hmm. what they yeah. say. So I didn't know that. So we just, he's I want to be a rapper. So then he started writing. Like, I still got tablets where him and my oldest son, Devin, used to write and battle each other yeah. with mm. these tablets. Like, I still got the tablet and everything. Wow. But I never did take him serious with no music because you play football and basketball. Mm-hmm. But he was a great athlete, though, right. from right. from probably one of, um, then, like one of his coaches. When he was standing in San Antonio, two different times I met him for Wody to play over the weekend. Half At this time, he like five, six years old. Come wow. play, but he played every position. So I met him halfway to take Wody on Saturday, and then Sunday evening I meet him just yeah, for him to play. Yeah. So I can imagine because when you said he took off running <laughs> to end up in cemetery, no teacher could even Nobody. catch him. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm just like, man, he the, fast. Whole, the whole story with Mr. Was is telling y'all how he was a jackrabbit. Like this, who, how Wody was. That's Every where time, he get it from. He'll call me, be like, <laughs> "Mom, under the house." My mom under the car in this neighborhood, come get me. But this one, Mr. Watson, didn't let him move back with me. Yeah. Because he, he, he always stayed with him because Wody was something else. That's why I said raising him, it just wasn't me and him. It's me, him, her. Oh, shit. His you mom, my baby. Like, he, it was a lot. It wasn't just wow. us. So it seemed like but, every time he got pissed off at somebody, he want to go over here. Yeah. He got pissed he off at you. Well, no, he wanted never to, yeah. wanted to come with me. <laughs> he never wanted he to come with you. Was. Because he, he Mr. Watts is a disciplinary. Oh, okay. Like, he gonna, he gonna beat your ass. And what he be like, mama, come give me. He gonna, <laughs> he about to kill me. <laughs> so I'm like, where you at? He like, in a bed too. <laughs> Hey, one and day the man ran away. I thought he ran away. The man was in the bathtub for two days. He was in the bathtub for two days. And you couldn't find him. <laughs> he in the uh-huh. bathtub for two days. Wow. I Hiding. go in his bathroom checking everything. But of course, I'm not going to check behind the damn curtain. No. I don't think he, you know, but he was gone two for days. two days. And the whole time he was there. And he didn't come out and eat or none. Sn- none snuck out. Well, when he, when he left to go to work. That's when he when snuck he, out. Yeah. He, he, but wow. I'm on the phone with That's him the smart. whole time. He's smart. But <laughs> he never wanted me to, to tell him. 
So he like in the bedtub, and I'm like, um, so you knew exactly where he was. Yeah, because I don't want him to beat him. Like I don't have to fight him while he whooping him. I jumped on his neck, no. choked him. Let my son that boy, go. mama's boy, that baby boy syndrome. That's what that is. That's why he was where he yeah. was. Right. So, let, let me ask you this: After 13, uh, when he gets into the music, does he stay in, or, or he, he just no. let it go and start back in school? Nah. Once he went back to school, he just started. Well, he went back to San Antonio. Uh-huh. So he go back to San Antonio. Great so ball. now he back with Mr. Walter. I think at ninth, but, I mean at, at ninth grade, him and his little homeboy. You, Cause Walter dance all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to tell him, "Hey, look, I'm gonna beat your ass by all the dancing." That, that old, you know, I'm, cause I'm thinking some some punk. I mean, right, some yeah, stuff. Right. Like, hey man, we don't do stop all that dancing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, who we still and uh. So, you know, he, he him and one of his little buddies, I guess he had challenged him or whatever to start doing. So he played a lot. He had a real, he had a great personality. You know, he played a lot all day long. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he go doing a rapping thing. He playing with it, though. And, you know, he but he rapping and he dancing. People got him on camera. And so, you know, he started getting, you know, a little fame behind it or whatever. And so he just he just fed into fed it because it, it. it was easy for him. It was natural. So he fed into it. But then, you know, one time, it had got to a point where I'm, I ain't gonna lie, man. I told my I, I done beat this boy so many different ways. I can't think of no more ways. Yeah. So I sit him down and I'm like, hey man, just just tell me what I should do. You know what I mean? Because at the time I'm divorced now and it's just me and him. And he's still so I'm, I'm I'm you know it's me and you, man. It, it, man and man, we gonna you know grown men and young men, but we gonna it's me and you we gonna make it work. And uh, I worked a lot, you know, because I'm trying to provide. Trying and to. And what did know, he upgrade. say to you? He told me that uh. I asked somebody to get in trouble. Like, how can you stop? Like, like what is it gonna take for you to stop? And he was, I'm like, man, you know, do you want to go to penitentiary with, like me and your mama? And he was looked at me dead in my eyes. He was like, y'all turned out all right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the bad thing about it, a lot of kids would say the same thing right now. Right, but like I told him, D. Well, when he you- go, instead of him saying his name, like, Ma, call them people. Come get me. Like, he never want to be there. No, of course. That's, like, that's he never, that's he never want to be there. No matter what the situation was, he want to get out that day. So when when he first started getting in trouble, I like, listen, you got to put money aside for your wardrobe and your bun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you want to keep doing this, you have to have you have to have that bun fee. So then yeah. I go get him a lawyer so he keep a retainer fee mm-hmm. with him. Because I'm not going to keep spending my money for something you continue to choose to do. Mr. Watson like, fuck that, leave him in there. I he, know he what he needs to learn. I know exactly. But that's the thing, though, too, though, because, you know, of course, being in the streets, I always tell him, man, you're going to be doing what you do. First thing you do, which I was taught, the first thing you put up is bond money. You don't go yeah. buy no clothes, you put up the bond money first because it's just inevitable. It's going to happen. So, you know, that's what he understood. And then, as he, of course, again, as he got old, he got his money up. You know, and like I told him, my mama didn't ever bum me out. My older cousin bailed me out the first time I got out and I had to pay her back. Yeah. After that, nobody ever bailed me out. You know, and I told him, man, if this is what you're gonna be doing. Of course it took me a while because he actually told me, like, Pops, I'm not I'm not working for nobody. He told me at fifteen he was gonna be a rapper and I told him, No, you're gonna get a job, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that. Yeah, I'm gonna rap. Yeah, but I you know, I'm not trying to hear that, man. You right. know, because everybody at the time, everybody, all the kids wanna be rappers. Mm-hmm. I'm not we're not doing that. We're gonna we gonna get a job, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And get you some type of extended education, if not no degree. When but, did when did you start taking him serious about he was going to rap? Never. Even like until over. he, yeah. I, honestly, because he, he got him a job at like Pizza Hood. No, I'm saying, when did you honestly know that he was going to stay rapping? Because when I met him, it was about rap. Honestly, like, it wasn't even that the fact that he was going to stay rapping. It was the fact that he ain't never working for nobody. He not okay. no job, and he been told me that. You know, and I'm t- like I'm, and I mean I ain't exaggerating when I tell y'all I'm beat this boy every which way. And I, I want I didn't want him to go to the penitentiary, you know what I mean? Because I know this is where you're going. Mm-hmm. And I tried my best, you know, to, to keep to him keep from him it. Out. But that's the one thing he always was, he was honest. You know, he gonna tell you, if he not doing something, he's just gonna tell you he's not doing it. If he did it, he gonna say he did it. You know what I mean? And he ain't yeah. gonna say he ain't gonna try to get away with it, but he gonna say he did it. So as as he got older and he started doing things, I just re, I respected his word, you know, and I I didn't I didn't ever like it, you know, but I got an older cousin, he more like an older brother. And he always would tell me, man, that's you, dude. that's you all over again. We can tell you nothing. You could, you, you wow. could nobody tell you nothing. The same way, you know what I'm saying? He just, just be thankful that the fact that he honest with you and he tell you. So then you know what to do next. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And and that's just how it was. Well, we're gonna we're gonna pull up to the the time when uh, he had gotten shot at the where I seen the video where he did mm-hmm. a. An interview afterwards, and we talked about here that here on the show. And a video too. Uh, he did an a interview, video. music video. I just want to talk about how that ended up. How did that come across to you guys? You know what I mean when it happened. 
uh, that was a time where basically um, I know I seen it because it was on. Uh, that's why I first mm -hmm. seen it, Dal Dallas Global. But, on YouTube. Um, what? How did you find out about that? And Nene told me a little bit about, about the it. shooting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the first time. The first time. The I think my my son my um my daughter had called me, and she say um that my I mean my goddaughter called me and said that he had got shot. So instantly. I'm going crazy, so I get, but I get to the first hospital, and they like he not here, so we go to the second hospital. But in the meantime, nobody is seeing nothing, so we don't know nothing. So when we get to the second hospital, and they like, oh, he was just grazed, you know, he'll be released in, you know, a couple of minutes or whatever. So then when they bring him out, me and his his other baby mama fiance, we in the room with him. So as we talking to him, he just, you know, turned purple. Wow. So the nurse come in, they pull him out, pull him back. So they come back and like, oh, you know, he did have an entry into the head. So then they bring him out again. So as me and Elliot in there talking to him, he again out again. So they rush him back and like, oh yeah, he was entry. He had an entry four times. So um, we're gonna keep him but he knew the whole time, but he hadn't made it there. But, but the neglect, but, we talked yeah. about the negligence of the hospital when yeah. he was on here, uh, how crazy it was for yeah. him during those times too. Yeah, but so, you gotta, so. I'm not to cut you off, but you gotta understand, man, it was a whole circus up there. You dig what I'm saying? Her brother going crazy, my sister going crazy, you know what I mean? It's all these other kids, it's, it's a lot. So you you gotta understand but with the hospital and they But his sister and my brother, they crazy anyway. Right, mm, period. So <laughs> it, it don't take much for them. So they going yeah. off. I'm hearing cause steady people steady calling me. I can hear everything going on in the background, everybody telling them what's going on. So of course, at some point, the hospital, the nursing staff, it's like, that's just too much. You see what I'm saying? They're trying I to hurry up I, and get him out of yeah, there. Yeah, but I feel like Cedar Hill Police played a big part in it. So when the, the initial nurse come out, she like, well, we just went off of what Cedar Hill police said, but now we're going to take him upstairs. So when they take him upstairs... What did they tell them? I don't... I, we never know, because Wody was such a fast person, he never wanted to sit down and take care of that part of the business. So I couldn't do it because he is an adult. Right. So every time the lawyer wanted to speak with him about the situation... You had he to was, step out. Yeah, he was always not available. So mm -hmm. the lawsuit and stuff never came about. So the only way you can get those records is if... Is requested by either mm -hmm. the either the the, the adult the per, the victim or either the attorney. Okay. But you know he never just got into that situation. I don't know if it's because he didn't want to go through everything that happened in the situation, or he just chose not to. He just didn't want. Yeah, he still was when he spoke about it. He was real. I don't know I was like God give you a second chance, man. You know, and and I, I we had those conversations on here, but it's just like. At the end of the day, he still was just stiff as ever, and yeah. just still just like that. He was I, in that hospital for two for two months. Every day we go up there, we get into it with him because he just. At first, I'm thinking he on medication or something because he just going out. He it's like everything he wanted to ever say to us, he said he would say it in this that time. Yeah, so I stopped going to the hospital, but Blake there with him every day. Like him, Blake, they just. Man, there, so they just you, man. sticking I'm it out. Every day. I'm talking about what he cussing out Blake, he cussing out me, he cussing out everybody. He put everybody out the room. Then one day, he just say, you know, I've been hurting since I've been here. I never not feel no pain. So my Amy, I'm like, what are you tripping? Because the nurse, she, the nurse on the night shield, she come there to see him. And so she like, no, he's telling the truth. The nurses just don't look after him like they should because the, the they going by the police. The, the city here police wow. is telling him not to do certain things. So I didn't know they can do that. And like, I you had have no a idea. medical so my, obligation so, to yeah. do your job. But, so the nurse, the, um, the, the next day they come in and, and put a tube in his chest which puncture both of his lungs. Wow. So for a whole 30 he days, that too. he don't have no lungs. He just breathing out this machine, but we don't know this because they not telling the parent, they just telling him. So the, the last day he there, my auntie That's go up there. That's a good lawsuit right yeah, there. Yeah, my auntie go up there and see him and he tell my auntie, I can't breathe, I'm, I I need to get out of here. So my auntie, they tell them to come unhook him. They like, if you take him, he can't take the breathing machine, he can't take the tube, nothing. 
So she like would take it off. So Blake carry this boy down three, down four flights of stairs. What he six three? Blake like five two mm-hmm. five three. Man, come on. Blake carry him down four flights of stairs to the car, and they rush him to Parkland. When he get to Parkland, they automatically put him and put him in surgery. They like they get to Parkland in four minutes, because you know with him not having no lungs. You only got two minutes. Right. So they get to Parkland in four minutes. As soon as he get in, the, the surgeon come out and like, if y'all would have got here a half a second later, you would have lost him. So he was in Parkland. They have surgery. They take him upstairs. So he and her like for another month and a half. But Blake's sitting there with him. He stick it out. I'm talking about he cussing everybody out. So how long did he but stay in after he was uh, in surgery? Uh, after after like he went a over there? Like a month and a half. A month and a half? Like that was a whole ordeal. That was a but lot. The thing with him was like you, you. A lot of times you couldn't tell him nothing, and he's yeah. not trying to. He's not even looking at the picture. Like, That's dude, cool. this is like you chasing money, but this is like this is serious. Yeah, life not only that is serious. But really, like, that really whole that money, whole situation really didn't right. even exactly. Have, but exactly. that whole that Legal whole money. Yeah. that whole situation really didn't have nothing to do with him. Like when he got that, when I got that apartment for him and Blake. And I called him three weeks later and like, let your brother move in with you. And he like, no, I don't want him staying mm. here because he do that and there's too much traffic. I don't, I don't, I don't want that over here. So I'm like, well, I got the apartment, he coming. So he move in. So what he called me and he like, he playing a game against somebody, some guy from Orleson. And he like, first he texts and say, I don't feel comfortable. So then I'm like, well, go, go live. You know, if y'all playing the game, go live on. I think it was on Instagram or something. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so it's him. But the boy had brought another dude. So then he like, I don't know neither one of these dudes, but he texted me this. So I'm like, go live. I'm like, do you got a gun? Do 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 y'all got a gun there? He like, let me go look. So he come back and then he texts and say, yeah. So while he's still doing the thing, um, my other son come. So when he come, they in the in in the room. So he he like telling. You know, what he get my gun, get my gun, because he see what he got his gun. So he give it to him. So after that whole situation, then he like, um, he's still talking to me on the on the text. Mm-hmm. So then he like, um, such and such bitch has done took the gun. He in the room with the dude. The dude asked for, uh, I don't know what it's called, but was asked for something. But it must have been some smile, because he like, he ain't going to sell him that. He won't even sell that to me. So then he like. Um, he he like man. I think he he done pulled all this out in front of the dude, but they in another room. Mm-hmm. So then I get so the phone hang up. But after the fact, he tell me that my the other son run downstairs to get some. The dude come back up, and that's when the dude got the gun on on Wody. And he like Wody like I ain't giving you nothing. You do whatever you do. You not taking nothing from me. I'm not giving you nothing. Whatever gonna happen gonna happen. So he robbed the other son. So after he robbed the other son, take everything or whatever, but he go on Instagram and say, I robbed Wody too live. They just take everything to a different level. Mm-hmm. He, he mad about that. And that's, that's <laughs> yeah. the same guy that shot, ended up shooting? Yeah. So he mad because the dude, like, he robbed him. Right. Wow. He like, nah, he ain't took nothing from me. So I'm like, just But it's a reputation. That's what and he's thinking And that's what he kept saying. He always want to protect his name. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, just let it go. It don't matter. You know, he's like, nah, he ain't mm-hmm. did. Took nothing from me, nothing. So, so he had seen him at a club or something? Or what did he see him at the no, team? So he's you know? seen him yeah. somewhere. So I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. Friend. Okay. So, so, so the dude, I think the, the mutual friend knew him and his brother. And he brought the, the other dude over there. So when everything happened, after that happened, Bodhi get back here. He tried to get his lick back at the other dude. So he ended up taking dude phone and stuff. That's how he got shot. Because instead of him getting rid of the phone, he had the phone. So of course the dude Tracking. put the location, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess some way somebody he tell Buddy, the gunman, where they was at. They over in front of Bodie uh partner house, they sitting on the side of the street blowing or whatever. And his partner that was in the back seat said he seen the car go down the street. Car go down the street, bust you come back. And what he told me then, when dude pulled back up, he said, dude looked at him out of eye. You know what I mean? And he just started shooting. So he got grazed in the front, came right, come yeah, right here, came right there, then he had him on the side. And then I guess when he was trying to get away from it, he got shot you know, in the shoulder, behind the shoulder blade, mm-hmm. or whatever, in the lodge right here. So they left that one in, they ain't taking yeah, that one out. Yeah, he okay, said so, um, But I used to tell him about that all the time, you know, because he was 
tall for his age, and he out, you know, they were boxing and everything, so they was good. So he, he, you know, he whooped kids his age, and he whooped kids that I mean, you know, older, it was older, yeah. older brothers and uncles or whatever. So, and I told him one he thing. Ain't no uncle. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> so he told me plenty of stories. Yeah. So um, the thing was, so like I told him, man, one or two things, you know, scary cat will kill you, and everybody ain't scared of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was that situation when he got shot. Like I told him. That day when I walked in the hospital and we talking, I told him, I said, man, I told you, man, everybody not scared of you. Like that dude look at you out of the eye and shoot you in your face, bro. He not but scared of you. But he never would tell us who the dude is. He never said, nah, never he would say no name, never tell none. But when I moved out the house and um, the lady packing the stuff for me and, you know, the, the movers, then they find these two driver licenses in the top of the cabinet. Like they been there this whole time. And I'm like. So he knew exactly who it is. Right, but he never. Never told us, never tell the police nothing. He just like he don't know who did it. He don't know nothing. So, but the I find them in the top of the cabinet when the the movers, you know, packing up the place. Did you think like after he got shot that first time that that he would have slowed down, or you no. knew it wasn't gonna be no turning down? Because he wouldn't listen to us. Because he's not that still, type of person. Like he's like only way to slow down. Even like even with his friends, like I'm steady telling him every day. Like we can all say what. We going to do yeah. it before something happened. We going to mm-hmm. do this and that. But at that time, you don't know how your body and your mind and your nerves going to react to that situation. You know what I'm saying? So when it, it happened, you can say you're going to do this, but you don't know how you your body going to react. So he's steady talking about this. So then he like, my, I, you know, I listened to what you said, and I feel, you know, I, I understand it. He like, because I feel like that's what happened at the apartment when the, the situation first came ahead. He like, you know, I didn't nut up, but my body reacted to this what I'm right. gonna do. So then when he when he was able to let all the everybody else go in here, yo, his ear, I'm like, you know these people you know, nobody can't tell you about this person, that person. You know people, you know, yourself. Exactly. So then when he listened to that then he like, Yeah, Yo, you right, you know, I, I sat back, I understood. He I always think when he go to church one day, I went to church and I get it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you this: when, cause, cause that's one of the time. But then Blake gets shot as well. Uh, he ends up getting shot, mm-hmm. and it wasn't for him. We talked about that on here. What um, did you think that would have impact, or how did it impact him? They still, they he both, still was ready to like, do really, something. Like he didn't. Like every time I tell him something, he's like, man, them niggas some hoes. They ain't. He never thought to himself like. I mean, he never said nothing to us when I'd be like, oh, I'm finna move because y'all doing this, this, and that. He's like, man, them niggas some hoes, they ain't doing all that. They only doing that because they this and that. Like, he never thought in his head, like, I'm, but my thing is a person come to your, back in the day, my brother, family, all them, they in the streets. Nobody it never. It sound like you nobody, had a crazy family. Right, my nobody, was right. Uh-huh. nobody never came to, the nobody never you, came to, us. came to our house to do nothing. Like, they scared to walk past the street. So when people come to my house bringing trouble, I'm like, no, they just in there. He like, man, them niggas some hoes. You ain't, you don't know. Mama chill. You just talking. That's, he always think I'm just talking. But me and my mental, I'm like, a bullet hole, a bullet don't have no names name on it. Right. I right. never held a gun in my life. I'm scared of guns. But him, he didn't, he just feel like, you good, they ain't. So I'm like, well, they came and shot the house up. After they shot Blake, they come and shoot they my can't, They come and shot your house up after yeah, that? Yeah, shot my so house wait, up. So, wait a minute, I thought, I thought when Blake got shot, it really wasn't for him, but... Evidently it was. I'm yeah, in my it, mind. It, See, cause it, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know. I told my I, son, I wasn't there and they never tell I me told nothing my son and I told Wardy too loud that day. I said, Look, nigga, you I usually don't let no nigga come on my show if it's been three years and you've been shot within three years, but they done snuck you on this show. You remember I told him mm-hmm. and so we was laughing because I was like, I, I got a limit. You know what I'm saying? If you've been shot and you and Blake been shot, so y'all really I don't put the hell y'all on here, but it family so mm-hmm. you ain't yeah. you ain't gonna go by them rules and i'm glad i didn't because i got to sit with him but at the end of the day that's something that i had been saying like if you've been shot in three years within three years you can't come back right. yeah. the only thing yeah. i think changed with him was when he told he told me when he was in the hospital bed you know we kind of started playing real we got serious and then he told yeah. me pops uh i ain't gonna lie this this had to happen he was like the only only way i was gonna stop jacking and taking stuff from people or something like that. He was like, man, them bullets hot, man. Yeah. Like, I don't want to get popped no more. You know, he's like, but, you know, uh, 
I'm gonna try to get myself right. And but he was like, I I, I ain't taking nothing else because I don't want to get popped like that no wow. more. So it's cool. So I, I got that. So but that's when he he went fast forward, you know, over the overdrive on on the jug and doing his yeah, his yeah, moves, you yeah. know. So that's when he just took off with that because he full throttle. But see, after that happened. Was that no? That was before he got shot. Right before he got shot, he had he got on paper. Okay, for robbing. Mm -hmm. He come down there, and he was staying with me. So I'm trying to help him get right. But I know my son. I know his. Movement. No, he came down there after he got after he got to the hospital. Was it after he got shot? When, no, that wasn't. No, no, it was before because yeah, then he so, got shot when he came back. Yeah, yeah so right. that's what I, that's the thing though. So he was down with me. Got him a little job at a little season. He probably lasted two weeks, you know. Yeah, because yeah, he didn't like want to work for nobody. No, he, he told no, it from it was, the get -go. it wasn't that. So he called, he's saying, Pops got me this job at Little Season and talking about my chick, $25. <laughs> and Pops talking about, I got you in there. I pull the strings. That's my partner. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you should. <laughs> he be I'm calling and telling her everything. Listen, promise the guy I still got that chick right now. So <laughs> he didn't even want to catch it. He's like, so, it don't make no sense. He like pops called me talking about you quit. He like yeah. He like pops talking about I don't beat your motherfucking ass. You done <laughs> came down. You got a light bill to pay. You you can't come in my house and stay and not pay no bills. I got you this job under my partner name. What he like? Ma, the check fifty dollars. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> them niggas ain't trying to hear that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do what I'm doing. I'm trying to get my boy get right. You know? I tried to get him out, but he wasn't for it. So it was a situation where happened where he, uh, I'm leaving for work. You know, I, I own a barbershop down there, so I'm leaving early. I go to work early. So I see a young dude sitting on the corner, far corner from down my house. See, lady, all we big, her crazy. I said, that's my partner. In my neighborhood, you stick out like a soul thumb. Yeah, you, yeah. There ain't none of that over here. So. I tell him, man, I already told you I want your partners over here. Don't want to know why I stay nothing like that. You know, I got a house full of women. It's only me. I'm already, I got to protect what's mine, but, you know, I mean, I ain't, I do have my history. So he's like, man, I don't know how he, yeah, he, you know how he stay, he know where we stay. Because obviously he done dropped you off or something. He know to stay down the street but not come to the house. So you done laced him. So we ended up, anyway, we got into it about that. So he come back home. Pops, let me go back home and do this, do that. I done told my P.O. I think he said he had a show or something. He come up here, but he actually come up here. He do the show. He get a car. I tell him to wait. He get a car anyway. He try to leave with the car. He ain't check the car out. The car mess up. So he don't get to leave. That's that Sunday. He's supposed to be back that Sunday. I told him, you ain't back here Sunday, man. You going to come get your, and get up out of here because you ain't trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So the car mess up. The car blow, up. It actually blow. It catch fire. So the car mess up, whatever the case happened. He up, I said, all right, it's all good. Whatever, do what you got to do. Get your money back. Because we knew the dude who did who sold the car. Get your money back or whatever. I said, well, when you get your money back, come back down here and get your stuff. Because you really, man, you at the point, I can see it. He at the point where he grown. You know what I mean? Like, he don't he don't want to listen to nobody else's rules. You know what I mean? Mm. And you hustling. But he really was at that time. Because instead of him worrying about the car and the money, he said, it's talking about me. I got to get back. Pop's going to do this and that. You know, but I'm I'm working, so I'm like I can't take you back. But his whole time, he just worried about, you know, pops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then I try to call him, and he like fuck that. He ain't come get his clothes. I'm like you a hoe. You say. <laughs> that dad, so, that, that, that's something, man. You know, when you're a father, man, you try. You, you can't make this stuff up. The one that do give you those issues are just like you. Yeah. I got some of them. You know, it's hard to communicate with him because you're too much alike. You know he what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he, he just, just like him. He just like him. When I when, oh, when, I, when kids I grown, went, you can't tell him. I'm anything. talking about he no. just he just like him. When I go when I went to his apartment, like this apartment he had over here, he he proud of this apartment because it's the only apartment he had like by himself that he got. Yeah. But everything like I don't know how Miss about to live now, but when we young, he always had like shoebox with money like and. Wody like he ain't put nothing in no bank. He don't fuck them up so bad. He don't trust nothing. So he got a I was a young father yeah, though. You so see what I'm saying? Yeah, I was yeah. just teaching him how to put back and save. Yeah. I, I didn't get them accounts till late on in life. Exactly. You know? yeah, so he ain't trusting none of that. So, so he got shoe boxes full of money. Full of money. Like everywhere. Got money in the cat. Every time like he gotta see it, he gotta smell it. It can't be nowhere off. He gotta be in his presence. And I'm like, dang, this boy just like his daddy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let, me, let me ask you this though like when 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 you because that was 
when he did the pizza thing, he came back and then he went through all the other yeah. stuff. That's one of the things. Yeah, like two that. weeks later. Yeah. 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 How long was it? Why? And we're going to go up. We're going to move forward, you know, because like I said, I don't want to hold y'all all day, but I definitely want to talk about the fact of the guy that was here with him that that that, that day. Uh, he had told me about the interviewing him, and I was like, nah, I, I really was just focused on water. I told you, I'm real. Mm -hmm. Like y'all here today, that's all I'm doing. I ain't doing nothing else. This is what I'm doing. So that's the kind of way it was that day. It was like, I'm only doing you. I don't care nothing about it. And they all, everybody here, you know, he kept people with me. Kenny B, they all do that. But I knew what I was doing, and I yeah. was focusing on the artists that I had picked. But um, for y'all, that was a stigma for me. Like, even that video, it was like, man, everybody started going looking at that video, trying to see who it was and what mm -hmm. had happened, you know. But what did y'all hear when y'all first heard that that they had gotten into it? Because I was up that morning. Matter of fact, Nene called me before you was driving up, actually. But um, it was early. Really, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. I never met this boy. I don't know him, but I don't. I don't talk. You know, being when I come down here, I stay at the Woody House, so I don't see him talking to him, seeing him having conversation with him. You know, I don't see them make money together. But all the rest of them, like Mario, Blake, Blake. Flip, I can say, you know, I, I know knew them. them. I might ain't never met they they family personally, but I I know them. But him, I can't tell you nothing about him. I don't know him. Him or the other boy. I don't, I don't know them. But I know that, that he dealt with them. Mm -hmm. But any, by all these friends, uh, people be around him, they know the type of person he is. When he, but that's when your friend. Mm -hmm. You know, if we get into it, we friends. We gonna get into it, but... At the end of the day, we yeah, come back together. Come, well, that's what yeah. that's what Nina so, told me that morning. Yeah, like, so, they do that at my house I don't, all the I don't, time. I don't he. think it's one friend that, I'm not going to say friends because they like a family. So I don't think it's not one of them that ain't fought each other. They fight all the time. Me, I go crazy. Oh, I'm finna, you know, I'm, you don't fight. But them, they like, Mom, you tripping. You need to chill out. You doing too much. Mm -hmm. But this, they, what he is like, a, has a horrid. You know, he's he's hit he, once he once he put his mind to something and he believes him. That's just what it what, is. How did but, you see it? So, well, one of his partners, which is uh, his old man, me and him was childhood friends or whatever, and uh, he explained the situation and he told me how everything transpired. And at the end of the day, it was, you know, like I raised him under the old law, like you know, you and your partner, y'all can get into it. You know what I mean? Especially when y'all that close, y'all might get into it. Y'all might scrap whatever depths and hooks afterwards, right? But like I also try to tell my, I always tell them I'm running with so many people because I don't always know all of them, you know. And then too, I always told them like everybody ain't cut like you, you know what I mean. And then when you know when the rubber meets the road, you are gonna see something different. So at that time, him and Buddy had the disagreement. I heard they had kind of touched each other up, like you know, got physical, but not like through no punch or whatever. So all you said he wanted to look at him, you know. We're gonna go and take care of this. Then we're gonna go on about our night, you know. And and again, sometimes. I be messed up about that because I feel like that's something I, I always explain to him because that's how we was. You know yeah. what I mean? Like growing up with her family, I done fought two, three of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if we we go, you ain't finna mess with them. Mm -mm, you know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. So that's how we was. And and I feel like by telling him that, he felt like because him, uh, the young man who's told me about the situation, Blake, they done all done had fights. They done yeah. got into it, yeah. but they still right back together. Yeah. But here it is, this young man, he, I don't know his background like that, but from what I've seen and, and read, he he cut from a different cop. He ain't really what these kids is, you Correct. know what I mean? Correct. So when you felt like he was like everybody else and you can apply the pressure on him like everybody else, y'all take care of y'all business and y'all back cool, he really wasn't with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, I, ain't, he ain't built like that. The little guy, what, was little, little Jug or whatever, the one, the other little guy that was I'll with both of the young. Yeah, he I came just, on I just the show don't know after what it, I just don't know what it is about them two right there. I never had no connection with them. But just like I say, what he would tell me, you know, Ma, you tripping. But as a parent, you know when people come around, I could cuss you can them. Tell. I could cuss them other kids out every day. Get out of my house. Don't come back over here. They and be, be right, right back. back the next day. I'm talking about in seconds. They back here like. That. They in the garage. They sleeping in the car in the driveway. They in the room. They don't care if I I cuss them out. Them two right there. It it never was the same 
like that with them. But they've but been, been around telling, longer. The other the other kids been around forever. But that's what I'm saying. He went, but I think that he knew not to bring them around me. Right. Because I could I would have told him mm-hmm. even the after the situation, the other dude like all his other all his other his his two four people. I call it that's the, that's the family. The family. It's not right. no. So they they don't call me and say, "Can we come or can we do this?" They just, show up. They just came. Right. This other fool <laughs> talking about, um, I'm not welcome. Who told you that? Yeah. So the instantly that lets you know something that it, 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 something yeah something was because in his heart. nobody never said. Matter of fact, we didn't even know you to say you couldn't come. Mm-hmm. So for you to say that is because you feel guilty in, in some type mm-hmm. of area for you to say that because nobody never said that. Then it, you got people go, oh, you know, send their condolences. You ain't never contacted me or him. You ain't never sent us no message. You ain't never said nothing. I'm talking about period. But then the first time you go do an interview, you want to talk about, oh, we weren't friends like that. So how the, f- what, what you mean? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I actually got, I seen it, but I got an interview that I had done with him. I'm going to be real with you. And he he started he was crying on here and all kind of and I never so we did, hadn't put it out I never put it out I just basically because I I didn't know how you felt about it or you felt about it I'm being real I don't mm-hmm. feel nothing you about know what I'm saying too. like so I didn't I don't never, feel nothing about them because, because I didn't, when it happened it happened so you know fast and everybody I even had uh, Barrio and all of them back over here at the same time I was just letting people come back because I was trying to understand what was going on with these kids because being sitting over here. You know, God put you in their life for a reason, especially when you're older cat. You know, right. I'm like, what could I have done? You know, I told you that as mm-hmm. soon as I was like, what could I have done or to say this or say that? Because you start putting to it change on, to, putting your, to, to make else. a change. You know, and, and you can't you can't really predict what happens with anybody. Your kids or my kids when they leave your site when they're at these different places and they're grown. But at the end of the day, I understand where you're coming from. You know, if I didn't, I would have been trying to do it for views and all that. But that wasn't me. Right. You know what I mean? I'm just I'm just trying to figure it out. And I want to make sure I stay connected to the right people that was connected to Wardy. That was pr- coming from my side of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's so that's the whole game. Like, you guys are special to me, special to this show. Like, that was that, that was special to me. I don't know. I don't trust neither one of them. Yeah. Because there's nothing that can happen to somebody close to me, and I'm not going to reach out to their family. Correct. Why wouldn't I? Mm-hmm. If this my partner, I feel Unless they feel him, guilty. I'm not finna stand back in the background. I'm going to reach out even if I feel, I'm still going. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing can happen to my friend right now. And I'm going, oh, no, nobody called me. They didn't know I'm going to be right there. How do you feel? What do you think? What do you think? As far as about what she said, you the same, you on the same wavelength? As far as uh, you feel like basically they should have, re- uh, that he should have reached out. Should there's some if, he if got you, all his you, friends are still his childhood friends. Correct. If any, if, if you in a situation, you know, and you know purposely, it wasn't nothing behind it. Shit transpired too quick. I it agree. happened fast. You gonna be remorseful. You know what I'm saying? You gonna come. Hey, look. But this the thing though too. Again, you know, I mean, they young, and we can say they kids. But at the end of the day, they men. You know That's what I mean? That's right. But they these are two different kind of men because mm-hmm. I know like what he he didn't do a lot. Of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I also know he can say when he wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? He may not right. want to, and it may take him a time to do it. But he can come tell you that he wrong or he remorseful or he's sorry about something. I messed up. Or my bad. He may not go into a whole spiel, but he'll say my bad. So even if the dude would have came and been like, hey, look, man, this happened. This is my partner. I'm sorry this happened. I just such and such, and I thought this. or this. It could have been anything, right? But if you show no sign, I mean, you ain't had to come. You could have found a way, you know what I'm saying? You, you. you know what I'm saying? Or at least got a number or something. So, hey, look, man, this is such and such, such. I didn't want to come around, but I want to tell you that, you know, you don't get none of that. So it's nothing. And then when he do make the post, it's still a it's still a, a, a dab. A, a dab yeah. Because you still trying to put him down. Oh, we did this. I don't want his girl to see it. Like, you, it's still a, a jab. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. It ain't it ain't no no genuine or you never see nothing. He's like, oh, we did this on the back end, his girl. This. No, you still came with your post. The rest of them can say, oh yeah, he made the post. Yeah, but the post still was a jab at him. It wasn't no genuine post of you still trying to put him down. 
with the girl. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Because then you tag the girl in it and like, oh, I don't mean no this and that. Yeah, you meant that. That's why you said it. At that point, you know I felt saying? like little man was just trying to. Uh, he knew the situation. He seen what was going on. You know, of course, he gained some a name behind it. So yeah. he was just feeding into it though. But you know, when you had them catch this. They want to be something. They'll do that. They'll take it. I mean, mm-hmm. at, the, at the moment, right. anyway, That's your true, name right. hot. You know, you, it's wrong for the wrong reasons, but it, your name hot or whatever. Like so trying to, trying now instead of right, you gonna capitalize on a situation like you was really that. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it definitely, man. Like I said, you guys, um, I don't know how it is to lose a child because I never lost one, but I know already it was it, it was tough. I remember coming to the funeral and basically just hearing you speak. You know. You know, I was like, man, you know, he's strong, and that that made me feel a certain way about the people because you were really talking to the people that was on that front row, mm-hmm. talking uh, to the boys, the boys, the ones that had been around, really giving them re encouragement, and you know, and people don't understand, but it's a way that you have to talk as a man to the kids and to the to the men or mm-hmm. whatever who are in that circle because you know already how much it affects y'all. You know what I mean? Right. You done been through stuff. You older than them, so right. I get it. But um, I mean, the girl that was a song there, she she came on here too. Jada Arnett. Jada, yeah, she been on here. She did a great job too. Yeah, yeah. And y'all did a good job, you know, yeah. during the COVID and all that to be able to put that together like that. It had to be tough, you know what I mean? And yeah. um, just man, kudos to y'all, man. Uh, like I said, I don't know, I ain't much you could say, you know, to to make no difference. I don't know what it is to lose a child. I mean, I know you guys have to be strong. You know what I mean? It was. Re- it's like some some. Some of the stuff, like the services, I, I didn't remember any of that from the service. I figured that much, but, you know what I mean? But I watched it on the, you know, they give you a, a CD, a CD. Or audio, so I watched it, but Shout I don't know. Shout out to Shalanda, yeah. she did. Her cousin, yeah, yeah, she did. She did a great deal. Corresponding yeah. what she did. Wow. She did a good job. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It, it, it really is hard. Some stuff that I try to, um, because before, the whole week before the end, you know, Wody would, he called first, he mailed me like his social, his driver's license. He mailed me like all this stuff in the mail. And so then when he, I was like, why you send me your stuff? He like, man, I don't you know why you trying to, you know, with my name, this. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I put it up. I still got it in my purse right now. So then he called back like on Wednesday. And he like, mom, um, I'm baptized. And I'm like, yeah. Wow. He like, do I need to get baptized again? I need to be sprinkled again. <laughs> he like, <laughs> and I'm like, no, nah, you good. And then so Thursday, so that's Wednesday. No, that's Tuesday. So Thursday, he called and he like, man, if I ever die, don't put me in the ground. He like, man, I just watched a video from Fort Worth and dude was pissing on people's graves and don't put me in no ground. So I'm like, okay, I got you. But then Didn't this, think about right, it at like, that time. Because his character is so big, like you he always put laughter into yeah. into a, a serious situation. Mm-hmm. So you never really take him serious yeah. about a lot of stuff. And less is about money. He only is serious about money. They see everything else he'd be like, mm, I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. But what do you think like far as I mean, cause, cause you've had a bunch of, I mean, artists. You, you know, a lot of artists. You've seen it. You know, you see artists, as rappers. For some reason, it seemed like a stigma because the, the 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 internet sucked it in. So, as soon as it happened, I get in, on on it. I was on my computer by three thirty four in the morning when this stuff started happening. First thing I do is I see RIP, RIP on my on my. Uh, it came to my timeline. my timeline on my views for what it that like. Real time, it may have been, I may be wrong with my time. I know I called Nene right after that, and my son. You know, I'm like, man, is this real or whatever? You know, because I, I I couldn't understand. Because social media is so fast. It's Sometimes faster than it, you can hear on social media before you even find out yeah. yourself. That's why exactly. a lot of parents sometimes people be finding out on social media before they actually even get a call. You know what I mean? I'm gonna tell you when we like in, before I got the house in 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 the city, we we in the country. So when I get out there, my phone, I lose service. Yeah. So Wody had called me like probably about 11 o'clock. And he like, my such and such a bitch. You know, talking about his brother. And I'm like, just chill, you know, y'all, you know, just get, get you a lift. But after that, like two, three hours later, my fiance phone just ringing constantly. And I'm like, don't answer that. It, it's like something just can't because we sleep. But... I wake up like five minutes for these calls, and I'm just sitting up, 
And I'm just looking at the ceiling, and I'm like, dang. So then the phone just ringing constantly, constantly. So when he wake up, I'm like, don't answer that phone. And he like, no, it's such and such. I'm like, don't answer that phone. But you I don't know what it something. was. It was just something. I just don't, I can't even explain the feeling. But then when he, he still never answered the phone. So I'm like, don't answer that phone. So I tell Cody, I'm like, get up, let's go. We finna go down there. But I ain't talked to nobody yet. But I can just feel it. Like, it is. Yeah, because with the, the phone call coming back is, to back like that, you yeah, know something Yeah, so I wrong. never answer till I get our other house is like, an hour and a half from the, the country. Mm -hmm. So when I get to the house, we just pack up our stuff in and start driving. So at this time, when people calling me, they just like, you know, the, you know, they's trying to, I really don't even know what they were seeing because I'm so, I don't even know how I made it here because I can't even remember the drive or nothing. Like, it just, I knew. but in, in my heart, it, it just like, I knew that he was gone, but I didn't want to accept it. You know what I'm saying? So then everything is just like your whole, like a whole, somebody just snatch your heart out your chest and just, you know, because I got other kids and we all cool, but me and, and Wody, we like, mm -hmm. we get into it, we argue, we fight, we do everything together. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, I'm talking about, so when I left his house that day, the last time we left, because we go every week, but that week we did not go. So, and then he, he like, man, you just drive me to Arkansas, y'all shouldn't have did that. So that's what make me feel guilty because it's like he telling me, you know, not to leave. But my guilty part of the situation, I just feel like if I would have been here when he calling and when he's saying he ready to go and ain't nobody trying to take him. If he would have called me, he know I was coming. But if I would have been here, he called me. I'm downtown. I don't even go downtown. I think I went to Mario Palmer downtown. Like, I hate coming down here. This is the worst thing ever. Mm. This traffic is bad. I hate it. But if he would have called me, he know. Ma, come get me. I'm coming down there. So that's a lot of guilt that I feel in my heart. Like, damn, you shouldn't have left if you would have been there. That's like, right now, I'm ready to move from Arkansas. Because wow. I feel like if I wouldn't have been there, then my, my fiance would be like, no, it's not like that. You know, yeah. everybody got a day in the no, time. Yeah. Day, yeah. But, but I understand you know. where you're coming from, too, that, that you felt away. Because I've been through situations, not that in-depth, but where I felt like if I did this, this might not would happen. I think we all do that from time to time. You may even have had times where you think, man, if I did this, I did that. But like, like your family do say, though, you know, certain things are already written, I believe predestined to be honest with you but at any rate where were you at the night when you found out was it kind of you was in san antonio yeah so just so happened uh one of my other baby mamas okay her ex-husband is the same dude the one that she was talking about that was there the first time me and him real close so and him and Walter, they do music together so they real close you know they real close so he hit me and he he's like man i just heard you know ooh, it's, he called me waking up i'm asleep i'm like Ain't nobody called me, but he the first one. I'm like, nobody called me. Then, oh, my other son, my oldest son, he called me. He like, Pops, you know. I'm like, what's up? He was like, man, what have been shot? I'm like, yeah, what's the name just told me? And he was like, she, man, um, his auntie was on the phone. He's like, well, she calling me back. Let me, I'm going to call you back. I'm like, all right. So, boom, I, of course, I'm putting my clothes on. I'm going to get up. I'm going to come down there. I mean, we done been through the drill, you know. I mm -hmm. understand. But he lived his life, too, though. He played like that. So, it, it's, you know, it's bound to happen. So I'm like, all right, I put my clothes on. He called back, Pops. I'm like, yeah. He like, she ain't make it. Of course, I'm still putting my clothes on. I'm like, yeah, you sure? And he was like, I was just, you know, they was on the phone with the doctor. She was right there with the doctor. He said, he ain't make it. I'm like, all right, I'm on my way down now. Ironically, my brother called me. He's like, bro, uh, anybody call you? I'm like, yeah, my phone hot right now. He was like, shit, uh, hi, nephew. I said, yeah, he got shot again. And he was like, how you doing? I was like, he ain't make it. I remember this shit. I mean, stuff vividly. I'm in my closet, put my clothes on. I ain't walking my wife up or nothing. I'm just finna go. And then he, my brother, you know, he go to talking bad. You know, nigga, what, what do you mean he ain't make it? Nigga, like I said, he didn't make it. You know, but in my mind, I'm still not processing it. You know what I mean? I ain't processing that at yeah. all, but... I know it's the truth because my son and Colin told, told me. Told you, yeah. So again, I get on the highway and I'm going. I get to the hospital, and uh, my older cousin, her fiance there, a uh, couple of her cousins, some more uh, two folks was there. I walk in, talk to him, talk to the nurse, and he tell me, 
Like, no, nah, he gone. And I'm like, he gone? I'm like, damn, can I see him? And uh, they were like, no, nah, you know, they already came and got, got him. Got So, damn, I'm like. Starting hitting at that point. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm like, damn, like, this this real. Real, yeah. It's real. So, I'm holding, you know. Yeah. I'm thinking about her because we done talked a couple I times on the way up the highway. Yeah, she's still on the way, right? Yeah. So, she gets there probably about 30, 45 minutes later and she walk in. Where is it? Let me see my son. Where, you know, she just, and her because per, she got a personality like that too. So she just walk in and I'm like, it really messed with me because I'm like, damn, like she don't even believe. Yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because it, it, she had no emotion like he was gone and I done told her that he was gone. So she wasn't, she, it, it had, but, and Nene told me that too. I don't know if y'all know it. Mm -hmm. But that, she was like, she ain't going to be able to deal not with this. Not till you see. She not till you see for yourself. Even, even when people me, be like, talking she, she and they be like, listen to him. When Wody passed or Wody, like, that fuck with me, like, even though I, I know that, you know, it's real, but just having a conversation yeah. and hearing people say, oh, when Wody died or, like, that right there, it, it, it still fuck with me because it just don't, it don't even sound right together. You know what I'm saying? So it's still, like, even when I talk to his his um, brothers and friends and stuff and they, sometimes I don't even answer for them because sometimes they talking to them and seeing them and, and they, they big life and everything and you don't see him like all of that just does something to me yeah, like yeah. all of you know life. it's it's some I know it's parents that have groups where they come together that have lost children um I don't even go to. I, I went to one group. You did. But I, I, I'm I'm about still, to ask you, did you still, go around that's that? That's what I'm yet. just saying. I, it still just don't. It don't connect with me because I still. I think me mentally, I still want to believe that he's still here. Yeah, yeah. So going to them groups, that's when you don't accept it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you're still that. dealing with it. Yeah, and it, and I don't think it goes away. It takes yeah. time. It takes a long time, but. I've all, I, I just want to say I commend you for coming on here and talking about yeah, it because the thing is that I've met so many people who have lost kids, whether it's a gun violence to um, it, it's a sudden death, and it's hard for them to overcome. To it's hard for them to it. talk about it, and they have dealt with it for years. But by hearing your story, it can help somebody else. You That's know what right. I mean? That's why I tell people you go through things for different reasons. It's not really for yourself. Yeah. It's to help somebody else because that other person, somebody might end up committing suicide, and because they hear this, it might help them to hold on because they have other kids who are depending yeah. on them. But people don't think about that at that time when you're going through a situation. Just like you said, when you were in prison, you wasn't really thinking about those kids because you know that they, they're good. Mm -hmm. But them kids loved you. Right. You understand? It would have affected them if you had done what you were thinking about right. doing. You know what I mean? And still today was grown when they always be, when they when you talking, I was like, y'all was good, y'all. they like, no, we wouldn't. Like, y'all wasn't here. Right. But in my head, you know, y'all was good. Like, mm -hmm. I fuck with these people that had y'all. You know, y'all. But, they, but they probably have yeah, different thoughts. Yeah, but they like, it wasn't y'all. Right, yeah. it wasn't yeah. you. So, but me, I'm like, yeah, right. they like, no, but it wasn't, you know, it Just like you said, that connection but, that you had with him. Yeah, but it, it, it really is hard. Like, yeah, even with the, the whole situation, it's hard because you think about it. Like I tell people, the, when it comes to this, when you, with him and this boy and all the situation, and then when stuff happened, I, I always jump on everything. And, but I can hear him saying, Ma, chill. You know, mm -hmm. I could hear his, his, his voice, voice in, in certain that. things. No, that's what he was, and, what he was Yeah, because I go off. I know. I, yeah. see, I, I can I, feel I go, your energy. I'm talking about you can't I say nothing. In my, in my if heart, I feel like I you talking about the pinky toe of his, I'm, mm -hmm. started, I'm going off. You not, she not hearing yeah. nothing. Ain't no sense you talking because you, you can't talk over I'm taking it all the way there. I, I'm going to meet she you. She go from zero to yes, 100. I'm realize coming. What it was a part of both yeah. of y'all. Yeah. And, and then, but people <laughs> don't realize that when it's a close person that did this, then when you when somebody else that was in that circle say something, and they be like, nah, mama, they love, whoa. You cannot understand that as a parent because the next mm -hmm. motherfucker that's supposed to love him is the one that took him out. Yeah. So when it's another person that's in the, nah, mama, don't do that. They fuck with him. In a parent's, in a parent head and mind and body and soul, when it's the, another person in the same instance that took him out, you don't look at it like, oh, when you see some, oh yeah, they fuck with him. That, no, you don't no. exclude none of these. Mm -hmm. Because everybody. the everybody. ones that I know, 
they the ones that's here. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? The rest of them, you can't call me like, Ma, I'll take that down. There's such and such. Fuck that. I don't care about that. Yeah. Because yeah. anybody we tell, we always talk about it a lot. And it's just in... The reason why is just to warn people, watch your environment, watch your people around yeah. you because Circle you might something. think that you, your partner's cool, but you have to reevaluate the people that are around you. You know mm -hmm. what I yeah. mean? Because nobody would have guessed that that would have happened. Right. But you you had a feeling it was something yeah, right because you she, never connected she, she with it. I never could. It. Yeah. I never yeah. could. Like the last day we was over there, they was doing some had to do with some some kind of business. So when the check come, the check like seventy five hundred or some like I mean seventy five yeah hundred. So they split it. So me, I'm like, the fuck you gonna check this out for young? He like, no, how we do this and that, this and that. He put me on to this and that. So that's how I know that he did. Mm -hmm. You know, fuck with him. But me personally, I never been in the same place with this person. But I can say that he fucked with him because. Yeah. He, he told me himself, mm -hmm. like, even with a lot of stuff that was going on, he like, he going to do this and that. But at that time, I'm thinking they all cool with him. I'm thinking they all know him. All of them. Then yeah. when they all brought down to it, they like, nah, we ain't fuck with him. But and that's the the one thing I, I heard afterwards that he didn't, they didn't do anything to him about that or that's what. No, I'm, they did. They didn't. But so this is the thing. So that's why I'm going to clear this, this thing up. When it come to the people that was there, so instantly, I'm a parent that's on this every day. I'm at the Dallas office. Yeah. I'm at the records office. I'm at the, the, the detective office. I'm at the DA office. I'm there. Every day, I'm driving down here. I'm so I can wake up at my sleep and I just feel something. I'm coming down here. So I'm making them show me all the audio, all the video. I'm okay. making them show me everything. So then it all boiled down to... When he when when he get the no bill, it's because the witnesses on um, that's there they never come forward mm. because the video it it, uh, it don't have audio, mm. so they need the witnesses to say what happened. What really happened? But be, be, before this happened, so the only witness they have is the driver. You see what I'm saying? The witness. Right. This is the only witness that can say what happened because he the passenger, he outside the car. So this is the only witness. So in the with the with him, you know, he bullied me. I'm scared. So even though he outside the court, he don't have no weapon, you only got one witness that said he bullying him. Wow. And this is what I want people to know. I didn't, I didn't know that they in could the, get in away the, with in the situation. So the boys say he never get no statement, never that. How they know who to call to get your car back? Yeah. If you never talk to them, the call not in your name. You never had no conversation with them. How they know who to contact for you to come get your call? Because mm -hmm. soon as they give Wody property available, they call me. And you can come get this, you can come get that. So you get your call back, how they... How they know who to call? Yeah. Right. How they know who to contact? Because the car wasn't in his name. Exactly. So how they? So you say you're going to get your call back in a week. How you know that? Who called you? Who told you that? Yeah. But you know the, what I'm saying? So when it come down to the statements, I got all the statements. I went to the DA office and I, when the man called me, he said, we going to know Billy because nobody never came forward on Wody's behalf to give a statement. This is why that day I lost my, my favorite brother and I lost another son because I don't give a fuck about what y'all say. It's done. They can't nobody tell me nothing. Because they when were there? It, they was there. Mm -hmm. But I'm not telling I'm not mad at y'all about nothing that happened after that or before that. But when you chose not to go give a statement on on my son behalf that cut out ties. I can't have no tie with you. I bear, I done damn near fucked up the kids and everything. Because it's so that's it's, the brother it's over me. That's your brother. That's your brother. Yeah. Because what what would keep you from go giving a statement? It right. ain't like you finna ride that on nothing because you could have did it right then. I'm not saying you should have or nothing because you know, I'ma go, I'ma take everything to the law. Yeah. In my age right now at forty two years old, everything I'm taking everything to the law. But you can't say what other reason wouldn't you wanna go get that statement? Because the only statement they got is one person. The the passenger could say what he wanna say. They not gonna go off of his statement. Right. They only gonna go off the witness. It's only one witness. Correct. That's it. And then y'all all popping on the witness. No, I don't think he would do that. What's the 
What is y'all talking about? They, they, you, they ain't. We, I'm the, we the parent. I'm the parent. Right. You, I'm you telling you, I'm riding on my son. I'm at these people out. I got text messages on my phone from the DEA right now. But I'm just going to take it to the next level. The state dropped it and no build it. But I'm going to take it to the feds. And that's why I come down here every week. And I'm going to petition. I'm going to go to their office. I'm going to do all it. I ain't stopping because y'all either going to handle it the right way. Because when they get handled the wrong way, then it's, it's, people going to be in trouble. I don't want it that way. Right. I don't want to see nobody in jail behind boys about nothing. So I'm going to go That's good. Don't give up because. I'm not. I'm said, telling you. When you do I don't things, care if I'm 90 years old. Yeah. It's not going to stop with me. No, it's I, not, I it's, believe it's you. Not, it's not going to stop. Yeah. Period. How hard is it for you to take it to that federal it was hard. The only reason it's hard is because I don't do nothing wrong in those streets, but just being in a, in a room with all these different people, it just... <laughs> but I'm telling you, like, you really be in a room with all these different people. You got ATL, DA, I'm like... Yeah. But I don't do nothing wrong, but it's just so uncomfortable. I bet. It's just so uncomfortable. So what, what do you think these your brother and these guys? Why wouldn't they say something? I don't get that either. I, yeah, I, 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 I can't, can't even. They, I can't even tell. Nephew, they don't right? give you no that's, explanations. That's their nephew. Right? I'm gonna tell you something. Listen. Every any like I said a lot of stuff, but I'm gonna clear it up now. My brother and son, all of them, they I don't think they had nothing to do with nothing. But what hurt me mm-hmm. is for the detective. To call me, I still got a message saying I'm trying to contact your brother and your son. They won't return my call. You know, I'm trying to go to them. I drive to them. I go to them and get the statement. She said, because I'm telling you now, even with a polygraph test, it don't stand up in court over a witness. So once you have the witness, they override everything. everything. So if you have the the club gonna protect themselves. That's why I'm going after them too. The security company gonna protect they self. Everybody protecting they self, but nobody stood up to protect Wody. And, and when it comes to the statements, you see what I'm saying? Like, it, it was like, oh, they was into it, or they had this little thing over $100 over the not getting their money back. But in, in the instance, the guy can go to the detectives in the DA and say, I was bullied, I was scared for my life because the retaliation. But in the statements, I mean, but in on social media, you do a different type of person. So they need somebody to come in and give a statement on what happened because there's no audio. It's mm-hmm. just the footage. And you just see what's going on. You don't hear no no voices. You no don't voice. hear right. nothing. So, yeah, he got the wow. state no built him. But I, the, that's I, it. I, I, I really, like I said, I, I'm really, like, I know already that this is an uphill battle for you, and, and, and I don't think it stops either. You know what I mean? Because that's your son, and, and can't nobody tell you how to deal with that. That's something that yeah. you and God have to figure out. You know what I mean? And same with you. Um, we we loved uh, the fact that we got to meet Wardy, and we wanted to bless y'all with just some plaques just to show our appreciation. You know what I mean? Um, it, it's just um, it's just it's something else, man. But I do know that that we here. If it's anything I can ever do, if you de- need these mics, they always wide open. <laughs> Everybody gonna see. <laughs> but it's just something that 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 I felt like you know it was a, a moment we got with him. Mm-hmm. And if he'd have still been around, just like the others, just like Barrio and all the others, he'd have been right back right on back the show. Because mm-hmm. I already was. I got the text where he texted me. Uh, I had put it out or something. He said something to me. It was something. We were going back and forth. I do the same thing. I got Barrio finished this morning, too. I knew he was coming. I didn't want to face him. <laughs> this is the only show that he did that I wasn't mad about. You said that. All the rest of them, I, 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 I called him the last one he did on at my family <laughs> house. And I'm like, he up here talking like his vocabulary not extensive. He up here smoking marijuana on the thing. Nah, theme, nah. We, we don't do, we don't so do when he did here. this one... I, I, I text him and I said, look at this one, he look better. So then he walked through the door, because I'm at his house. He walked through the door, I think Brooke was there too. And I said, yeah, he he did better on this or the other one. He talking about, I like music when I started doing music. <laughs> 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 no, I enjoyed but, that day. I went back and looked at that But this one, really, he really, you know, gave a little bit of his real character. Right. All the rest of them, I think he just did the interviews because they wanted him to do the interview. But he wasn't... We had fun. Yeah, this we one was fun. totally different. And, I, I was kind of proud of him. I talked to him about his clothing line and all kind of stuff. Yeah. And 
and we was talking about him doing his stuff and making it his own brand and not putting it on other people's platform, yeah. building up his YouTube channel. That's what we was talking about. So I, I always I went back and looked at it several times actually. But go so, ahead. So um, we would like to present y'all with this award, and it says in love and memory of Wody Two Live in recognition of the natural talent you had for the music, releasing mixtapes after mixtapes. You've always illustrated love for the two four family and for your family. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That that. I'm gonna have to shout you out for the end. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no man, you guys are, are dope, man. And like I said, man, if there's anything ever that you need from me, I'm here. Yeah, man, you gonna, we gonna talk. We gonna chop it up. We definitely. Gonna I talk. already knew that. I told you that that day when we, when we was at the funeral. Yeah, I was like, yeah, man, we got we got we gotta get together. You thought I was playing. I, yeah. I'm not gonna never stop calling and worrying. And Brooke, shout out to her. Everybody that keep trying to run from me, nigga, I'm calling you. We gonna ride. <laughs> Man, thank y'all for coming, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. Why the bosses talk, man. We love you guys, man. Thank you. All right.